welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa. Can you see my apron? It's so cute. I got it in Rome last year and I completely forgot about it, but here it is. And I felt like it was super appropriate because today I'm finally going to make a savory recipe. I know I'm always making dessert, but I can make savory things too, guys. And I'm going to show you how I make a focaccia. Now my focaccia recipe is so delicious. It is perfectly a little bit crisp on the outside and nice and soft in the inside. And you can, of course, make this plain or put whatever topping you like on top, olives, onions, it's up to you. I like to put on a little bit of herbs and some tomatoes. It is my favorite way to eat it like this. Don't be intimidated. It's not not that difficult to make but it's so delicious to eat so with a little bit of time and patience you too can make this beautiful Italian bread Okay, so I have two cups of warm water. You can just use the warmest notch on your kitchen sink or maybe microwave it for 15 to 20 seconds. And to that, I'm adding two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. So to the active dry yeast, yeast actually really loves sugar, so I'm adding one tablespoon of sugar. And we are giving that a quick stir. So now that we have the two cups of water, the active dry yeast and the sugar, I'm just going to put this away for 10 minutes. And when we see that foam on the top, we'll know it's ready. So be sure that it does foam because we want to know that the yeast is activated. So while that yeast is proofing, we are going to get our mixer ready. I have my handy stand mixer with the dough hook attachment. This is absolutely necessary when making doughs. And to this mixer, I'm going to be adding four cups of all-purpose flour right into the mixer. Then I'm going to be adding one tablespoon of salt right into the flour mixture. Quick mix just to incorporate the flour and the salt. Okay, so I have that yeast, water, and sugar mixture. As you can see, the top is nice and bubbling and perfect. If you ever do this and you see that it hasn't bubbled at all, it's probably not good and it hasn't proofed, so you'll have to start again. Sometimes yeast can be a bit finicky, but this one seems to have done its job today. I'm going to add this to my mixer. And to that as well, I have two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil right into the mix as well. And now I'm going to turn this on to about a level three speed, so a medium to low speed for about four to five minutes. And then I'm going to increase it to level four speed for another four to five minutes, so eight to 10 minutes. And this will be mixing and making that focaccia dough. Now do pull this over to the center because this can fall off, so be very careful. Okay, so the dough is ready. I would say I had that going for about nine minutes. Eight to 10 minutes is usually a good time to get this dough going. Now I have a bowl right over here with about a tablespoon of olive oil. So with clean hands, just rub that over the sides because you really want to coat the bowl in olive oil. This olive oil is great because focaccia loves olive oil. The olive oil will help it rise and help it to not stick so much. This dough is a very sticky dough, so I'm going to transfer it over to this oiled and clean bowl. Okay, so now the top and bottom is nicely coated in olive oil because I just flipped the dough right over here in this bowl. Now I'm going to get some plastic wrap and cover it with plastic wrap, and then I'm going to cover it with a cloth on top. And a little tip here is that I have some boiling water in the microwave because that is going to create a nice steamy environment. So you can microwave a cup for like a minute or two just until it's nice and steamy in there. And when I put this focaccia dough in the microwave, it's going to get nice and warm. And this needs to stay in a warm environment to really rise properly. So we need to keep this in the warm environment, which for me is my microwave, for an hour and 30 minutes. And then we'll be back and we'll see that this has doubled in size. Okay, so one hour and 30 minutes later and you can see that this has literally doubled in size. It's good that I have the oil in there because this will make taking the focaccia dough out of this bowl much easier. So I have this nice nonstick pan here and I coated it with about a tablespoon or so of olive oil. So now let's get this dough out of here and spread this out with your fingers. Now this would help if I didn't have long nails, of course, but what I'm going to do is use my knuckles or the pads of my fingers if I can and just stretch out this beautiful warm dough. 
It's really important to use a pen that has at least some sort of wall going on here. So this, I would say, has about an inch of a wall going up. You can even do this with a higher wall by all means, as long as there's something. So now we are just spreading the dough out with our hands and also making tiny little incisions. You can see that we are sort of dimpling this dough. That gives the focaccia its iconic look. Now this could even just be good as it is, but what I'm going to do is drizzle just a little bit more olive oil on top. I would say barely even a tablespoon. Work that in a bit. And now I also have these beautiful cherry tomatoes. They are so good, cherry or grape tomatoes, whatever, as long as they're small. And now I've cut them in half and I'm going to insert them into this fogaccia dough with just the half side up. And now to those tomatoes, I have basically a quarter teaspoon of Italian seasonings, which is like basil, dried oregano, rosemary, things like that. So I'm just going to sprinkle on this quarter of a teaspoon right on top of the focaccia dough and tomatoes. So that seasoning is of course optional, but I really love the flavors and aroma that it adds to this delicious focaccia. It's so good. Of course the tomatoes are optional too, but I find that when I make it with the tomatoes, everyone is sort of cutting pieces just to try to get that little bit of tomato on top. They're so delicious once this goes into the oven. Now we are almost done. This has to go back into a warm spot for another 45 minutes to just rise quickly one more time. So what I'm going to be doing is covering this with plastic wrap and a cloth, putting this in a warm spot for 45 minutes. At the 30 minute mark, I'm going to get my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That way it can start to get going and when this has risen, I can just pop it right in. Before I do though, I like to sprinkle this with about a quarter teaspoon of a nice salt, just to add an extra little saltiness on the top. It is so good. So I'll see you guys right back here before I place this into the oven. It's been 45 minutes. This beautiful focaccia has just come out of its nice warm resting spot. It's ready to go into the oven. But first, what I like to do is take about a quarter of a teaspoon of this nice coarse salt. I'm actually using fleur de sel and I'm just sprinkling it all over the beautiful focaccia dough. There you go. It looks absolutely beautiful with those fresh tomatoes. It has risen. You can see the dimples in the dough. So this is going in the oven and I will see you guys when it's done so that we can taste this. So I'm back. This focaccia took anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes in the oven. If you would like the exact instructions, check out my blog on ladolcelisa.com for the written recipe. Look how beautiful this looks. It's nice and golden brown on top. And inside you can see that it's light and fluffy. So let's taste this to see how it is. But I have a feeling I know it's going to be good. Mm. Still warm. <laughs> Wow, this is so good. It literally just came out of the oven like not even five minutes ago, but I couldn't wait. Look how fluffy and delicious this is. The top is lightly crisped and golden brown and the inside, as you can see, is nice and fluffy and doughy. It is cooked perfectly. I absolutely love this. And of course, I took a bite with the tomato. They add such a nice pop of freshness and that delicious coarse salt on top. It's heaven, guys. So please do me a favor and give this recipe a try. I know you'll love it. It literally had like six ingredients in it and you just made bread. Any way you slice it, it's delicious. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Bon appetito. Two and a quarter teaspoons. Yeah, I'm filming. No, you're not. Oh, yes, yeah, I am. I don't really feel, and that does come from childhood, of oh, not shit. being the dumb kid of being. Still warm. <laughs> 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 you make me laugh.